hello everyone uh, welcome back to another video uh, in this video we're going to discuss uh, how we can use delta divergence uh, so uh, first we'll discuss what delta divergence is for people who are new and then we'll uh, dive deep into how we can find trades now uh, by definition delta divergence means that uh, if you have for example uh, a candle that is going up and uh, correspondingly the delta should also go up so what you can do is if you are new to this you can plot uh, delta bars below this there is a function over here where you can go here and uh, choose an indicator delta bars and you can have them plotted below uh, in the cumulative delta format so what you will see is for example if a, a bar or if there is a trend that is towards the upside uh, you would generally see the delta corresponding now by delta divergence what we mean is that at some point uh, even though the bars are going up and uh, the cumulative delta goes and stops at some point and refuses to go up or uh, in other terms in plain and simple terms you have an up bar with the delta being negative uh, over either over here or in the cumulative delta delta bars that you have plotted down so uh, for ease what we have done is uh, we have chosen only uh, displaying the delta over here like you can see over here we also have max delta min delta over here cot low and high which you're not going to use in this one but you can of course club it with anything else uh, any other confluence or any other order flow tool that you like so in this uh, video we are purely going to discuss uh, what delta divergence is and how and where to use it so uh, the other thing that I've done is you can go over here and you can choose uh, this uh, delta divergence to be on like uh, I have switched it on over here. So what you see here is uh, green and red stripes being plotted. So what this means is a green stripe is that the delta was positive the, for the bar. However, the, del the bar has closed uh, negative that is it is a red bar so this is a divergence just exactly in the similar way like you have in any other indicator like rsi or something whatever you choose so over here the difference is it is actually buying and selling pressure that is uh, being displayed over here so uh, now the other thing is you cannot go ahead and use delta divergence anywhere you like so uh, essentially what it means is that when you have something like this you straight away enter a shot but that is not true you will get stopped out a lot of times if you don't have a proper context so what we're going to discuss today is how do we use it so some of the criteria that I'm going to list over here like we do in each of our videos is firstly the volume uh, there should be a delta divergence that is criteria number one okay uh, second thing that we are going to do is uh, that the volume should be above average okay so you might have noticed i pay a lot of importance to this particular factor if it is not there for bars that have volume like this and there are red stripes i do not care i i'm not going to get a good trade over here a uh, good trade means at least one is to 1.25 if you're scalping or one is to 1.5 we are not going to find trades here and we generally going to end up scrapping up our trades so i do not want that uh, so that is why i generally choose uh, bars with above average volume the third thing that we're going to look is uh, it is essentially another form of delta divergence effort versus result so uh, there can be bars for instance uh, where the bar was i mean completely bullish okay like this and the delta was just i mean uh, negative just in a small manner so you could have a minus one or minus two a delta over here as compared to the bullish bar so this is something you need to be aware of so in this it does mean that the sellers have been absorbed but uh, uh, I mean a counter trade would not be as useful so you have to pay attention to what is the delta number that is being plotted now I don't essentially mean that you should remember all the numbers it is relative so for example uh, this particular chart is of 21,500 C for the first of February that is why the numbers are low so you have to be very very aware of the numbers uh, in the sense that uh, the relativity for example this bar clearly shows that there was a high volume and there is a delta divergence so I would clearly want to see this bar uh, unlike any other bar for example we had bar like this which had a low volume and there was a delta divergence I wouldn't pay importance to this one I would certainly pay importance to this bar over here okay so that is what I mean by effort versus result so you can see that uh, we'll just go into the I mean each bar specifically where we can uh, find such trades and go ahead and uh, use this particular strategy now the last thing that I 
I mean, uh, you can use is uh, what is the context. For example, if you have, uh, uh, you can use it along with something like continuous POCs that we discussed in the last video. You can go ahead. It is, I, I think, on the Hindi channel. So that is another tool you can use. You can also use it with uh, the max and min delta strategy that we've used. So they're going to help you in determining uh, what sort of a trade or whether sh you should enter into a trade in the opposite direction. So uh, the delta divergence by its name suggests that we are going to go counter trade. I mean, uh, we're going to counter trade. That is, if the market has been moving up and we have spotted a divergence, we are going to go in the other direction. So this is risky. That is why uh, it's really important to uh, understand whatever uh, the other parameters are like I just discussed. So uh, if the volume isn't there, there is no point in uh, going and uh, taking a counter trade, you'll get stopped out. The other one is effort versus result. I want to see uh, something like this. That, will, that means that there was a big sort of effort. Maybe there were the stops getting triggered, whatever was the case, a lot of buying activity on one side and they are, uh, I mean, they are uh, being forced or getting trapped uh, when the market starts moving against them okay so uh, you can call them trap traders or whatever you can call them so th essentially these 586 contracts that are here these guys are going to get trapped because they have uh, either they were the stops or they were thinking that the market is going to go up and they get trapped and the market moves in the other direction this is what we're going to spot and the other uh, two is up to you i generally try to have a confluence along because we as i said we're going to take a counter trade so now uh, without further ado let's get into uh, the bars where we can uh, spot them so the first one that i see here is uh, over here again i'll repeat it this is 21500 ce for uh, the first of february that is why you would see the premiums also a little higher on the higher side so uh, a lot of you guys would be wondering why I have not, I'm not considered these bars. Again, as I said, uh, they all had something which I don't like that is low volumes. Okay. So if something on this bar, if I would have seen, I would have certainly, it would have interested me. But all these bars, these delta divergences are on uh, low volume. The first time I see a good volume is somewhere here. And this is what I want to see. Okay. So now I straight away when I see something like this, I am uh, looking at the uh, number of traders that are getting trapped. Okay, that is one. The effort versus result. That is, uh, the, there was a lot of contracts that wanted to, I mean, a lot of players that would have wanted it to go up. I can see that in the max delta over here. If you see the max delta numbers are really, really high. But, uh, and the delta that is closed is 72. So I know there is some sort of selling that has come in. Now, this is one spot that I've picked. Now, where do I enter a trade? I uh, I actually wanted to come back here so that I can take a counter trade. It doesn't happen. It goes down, uh, waits here and comes back here and doesn't give me an opportunity over here. So this trade is something that we wouldn't have taken because there is nothing when it comes here uh, that gives me a chart. Uh, I mean a chance. This is a one minute uh, candlestick chart. So you can see there is absolutely no time uh, for us to take a counter trade over here now let us delete this and see uh, just after this if we got something on the other side that is a counter trade now look at this bar okay again it is a volume uh, bar which is volume higher than the last i mean four or five bars okay now uh, over here i see a stupendous i mean a good amount of delta that has come up and it is very close to max delta so uh, from the time uh, these aggressive buyers stepped in uh, not a lot of sellers stepped in so this is an area that i mark for myself and again as i said i look for uh, uh, i mean retest of this area we can mark this i'll just delete everything and you can have this mark like this okay so this is the area i'm looking for whenever i'm planning a re-entry and uh, a similar sort of a thing happens here it comes down it again takes out some some sort of stops and a lot of tra traders are trapped here. So as soon as this crosses uh, on its way up, I am uh, ready to enter this bar. And again, a stop loss of maybe seven or eight points on this, uh, depending on the premium, for example, is 156. I would have maybe had one, seven or eight points against uh, 10 to 12 points that I'm looking for. And the target that I would be looking for is again, the area where I saw the last, uh, uh, delta divergence taking place that this was would have been my target because this is the place where I know some sort of uh, 
counter trade could uh, be possible or some sort of sellers could step in so this is uh, the way I generally look at how to uh, take trades using Delta Divergence. So let's go ahead and see other places where we could have spotted it. Now uh, coming on, I will just delete this as well and we'll see all the examples that we have here and so that you can understand where and how to use it and where not to use it. So this is another bar where we see a lot of uh, buying Delta Divergence that has stepped in. Again, it means that uh, we have some sort of uh, buyers that are stepping in. Now, if you've seen my last video, you can see this is a continuous POC uh, that I keep talking about. That is, there are two bars with the same POC and in both the POCs, there is an attempt by the buyers to go on the upper side. Now, if you look over here, these are not stops. If you look over here, this is right in the middle. Uh, it would have been uh, of this bar, maybe some would have been stops, but look at the amount of buying that is trying to come in at this place and hold this and then go up. It fails. And uh, like I've discussed in the continuous POCs uh, video, as soon as this goes down, you can try and enter. If not, if you missed it and you're a little conservative, uh, like I am, I, I would have waited and I see another Delta Divergence bar on uh, a high volume uh, this thing on high volume so these are two bars I will just go ahead and mark these places and these are two places that I'm going to mark either I get a uh, maybe a, a trade on the opposite side or I wait for an entry to go on a, a short or the long side okay so when both of these bars break now I am looking for uh, like I said they've gone down so uh, in the two continuous POCs video you would have seen I'm waiting for something like this so that I can enter short this is the same concept in Delta Divergence. I am waiting because all these buyers have been absorbed. I, I expect them uh, to hold their ground, the sellers that is, when the bar comes back over here and I take an entry here. It doesn't happen. It goes down and it goes down considerably and I get my other opportunity here. Now, what do I get along with this is a, a Delta Divergence uh, on the other side. So this is what my confirmation is. Uh, I'm sorry for that. So if you look over here, on this bar, I get another uh, confirmation that a lot of buying presence is coming at the same point if you see and they're failing. So this is where I take my uh, entry and again my stop loss would be 7 or 8 points just below this level, somewhere close to this level or this level and my target would be again at least 10 to 12 points and uh, that is why that is how I would go about my trade. So I'll just delete this and we'll go ahead and see if we can find another example of this sort and uh, with high volume bars. So this is another bar, but if you look at this bar and look at the volume, although it would have uh, given you good opportunity, but it is on very low volume. I do not uh, believe in del looking at Delta divergence at uh, with bars that have volumes like this. You look at the bar, this is the bar with the lowest volume. So this is absolutely of no significance. Look at the previous bars, look at the bars that follow and look at this bar. This is absolutely low volume. So this is of no significance to us and uh, we should not consider uh, bars like this so let's go ahead similarly this is another bar with very low volume and high volumes on either side now the next time we get something of good consequence is this bar okay so again uh, let me straight away mark what we discussed you can see straight away over here that uh, there is really high amount of sellers that are getting absorbed over here this bar is of high volume and we're looking for a retest and whenever it comes you can plan your entry when you see something like this being absorbed stop loss again uh, seven and eight points against a target of uh, maybe eight to ten points i think you just barely get eight points and then it reverses from here but my point is you will get uh, almost 60 to 70 percent of trades working in your favor uh, even if you saw something like this over here what happens after this is i'll just show you is when we enter over here we see uh, another delta divergence I, i'll just show you over here these are the sellers that are stepping in getting absorbed so uh, once this i'll just delete this and uh, mark it with another marker over here okay so you, if you look at this bar okay this is really high volume and look at the delta that has closed minus 670 and it is really high as compared to the previous bars as high as this one and a lot of sellers have tried to step in over here as many as many as over here and uh, they would, could not succeed that the bar went up so this is another place uh, maybe we could have looked at 
since we were looking at taking a long trade over here looked at taking a trade if this would have held but this is a place where we took uh, look at we enter the long according to our rule it gives up one is to one if i'm not wrong and then uh, falls back so as soon as it starts falling back and comes it's always better to trail your stop loss and get out if uh, i mean if you're not not uh, trailed aggressively and taken at least one is to point eight or something like that now when the bar comes here you again see uh, in the same area uh, this is a continuous poc uh, bar a lot of uh, selling and buying so this is that is why i keep these areas marked because they are of interest to me even this if this trade fails you see the number of attempts that are made after this bar to close above this and yet fail so this is a good entry point if you're scalping and you can get seven eight points out of just defining and getting your zone straight so once this zone is broken it is a i mean uh, until unless it breaks to the upside this is a good zone that will keep getting defended uh, till the time market is uh, behaving like this in a in a balanced way and you can keep finding your scalps uh, accordingly so uh, another example where we see something like this is this one okay you can again see a lot of uh, on a high volume bar the sellers getting trapped same way we wait for it to come over here and we don't see any bar closing above this zone so uh, we don't find a trade over here like we did in the previous examples so it doesn't mean that this zone is of not uh, of no importance to us as i just told you this zone will be of real importance to us as soon as there is a comeback or uh, for example something like this okay so this zone is being held for a lot of time but as i said effort versus result there is nothing that is going in the opposite direction so uh, you can plan a trade if you uh, wish on the short side but again when you see the pullback as shallow as this it will actually no make no sense to take a good trade on the short side over here although it holds here for a long time then breaks and it comes back and um, if you look at it uh, this one it holds till the zone that we have drawn from uh, the previous delta divergence bar it holds here and again goes back so this is why i keep plotting these zones because they really help us to uh, find places where we can enter quick scalps for 8 to 10 points and uh, they are of real good help so for example if i would have entered a short here and i see a delta divergence again on a big bar so i already have my uh, zone plotted you can see this uh, a delta divergence here and i have already plotted my soul so as soon as i see another uh, i mean attempt by buyers and it fails i would have entered my short here with the stop loss just over here and i know that i can at least get uh, if this is a five to six point i am looking for eight to ten points on the, in the other direction till this place uh, is would be my target and uh, that is how i can uh, plan my trade if i have my zones mark so hopefully uh, this video is of some help to you uh, you can use these delta divergences with all uh, high volume bars and wherever you see it instead of just going ahead and looking at all these bars and all these stripes and planning a trade at every one of them only the high volume bars uh, is the place where you can use them and use it along with max delta and the continuous poc strategy that we've discussed so uh, until next time guys thank you bye bye